Parkinsonism. Uh, park in. Park in. Okay. Parkinsonism. Parkinson disease is more dreaded in America than is heart disease or cancer. If you ask any typical person, what would you rather die of? They would say, I'd rather die of something other than Parkinson's disease. And the other companion to this is old Mr. Alzheimer. Uh, what about okay. Huntington's? Huntington's disease is more of a movement disorder. Huntington's chorea, Sydenham's chorea, you'll see some of those flailing disorders. Mm -hmm. And those have to do, those are uh, autoimmunities and they occur less frequently than these two. Yeah. These two are more common. And these have more to do with the frontal lobe, frontal, do frontal lobe demise. Uh, when we look at Alzheimer's disease and dementias, uh, what we're really looking at is a loss of frontal lobe of the brain. So when we look again at our, our model, really what we're looking for is a loss of this human expression from this frontal area of the brain, which really is what separates us in all of uh, braindom, if you will. Uh, let's actually not give this occipital lobe such a large response. It looks more like a hairdo. So <laughs> when we look at this, we're really separating then this brain by its ability then to get information to this frontal area. Because in the frontal area, this is really the expression of humanness. Uh, when we look at the frontal lobes, that's again why a mom would have a baby and say after a few months, oh, I can do that again. Look how cute, yes, yeah. right? Are you kidding me? Yeah. Go back and watch the video, honey. <laughs> Ready to kill us both, right? But that's, that's the frontal lobe, okay? That's why dad at night says, get up, my turn? Okay. <laughs> Gladly, right? And we do it again, okay? But that's frontal lobes. And when we stop getting information to the frontal lobes of the brain, then we lose that human expression. We lose that ability to relate, that ability to feel connected, the ability to feel human. Okay, and express humanness. This is the highest functioning order of brain expression is the frontal lobe. So when we look at this, again, focusing on this area of the brain is so essential and so uh, key to our development. So when we look at this, a loss of development of the right frontal lobe is inattention or a condition we call in a child Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, or ADD, okay? That's a loss of right frontal lobe maturation. I can't focus, I can't multitask. I can't keep in that right frontal lobe multiple activities. I ask my child to go out to the car. Will you please go out and grab your jacket and get the groceries, come back in, hang your jacket, put the groceries away. And by the way, did you read today? And the only thing he hears is, did you read today? So he goes and sits down, reads, and half an hour later, you go out and the light's still on in the garage and the car doors are open and the wind lights are all on. And, hey, I thought I asked you to read. <laughs> I have been, right? Because that lack of maturation of the right frontal lobe doesn't multitask. It only gives us one task. And consequently, we only have that portion of the focus, and if you could, Jen, hand us a clipboard there, please, so we have something firm to write on. <clears throat> so that's a real key for the development of the child. The child who continues to wet the bed at night may be dealing with a lack of maturation of the frontal lobe. The frontal lobe gives me then, again, that humanness. It's not desirable for me to wet the bed, right? But that lack of human expression, then, you'll see the child who wets the bed, wets his pants, continues to have accidents during the day and just doesn't care. Okay, So this is even into teen years, you'll see sometimes this type of a lack of expression or a lack of cognition or awareness. All right? So again, this frontal lobe has the ability on the right side to create a list 
and create then this prosody of thought. So sometimes in order to exercise that, we actually have to create that type of listing that actually becomes an exercise for that child. Before you go to bed, you're going to thoughtfully plan out your next day. At 8 o'clock, I'll be going to school. I'll catch the bus. At 8.30, I'll be in my first class. In the first class, we're going to be focusing on this, 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 and this, or sociology, turn in my homework. By 9 o'clock, I'll be going to PE. By 9.30, I'll be changing out of my PE uniform. And on and on, that prosody of thought goes. The challenge is, <clears throat> in the child, we can call this ADD, ADHD. In the adult, your husband, you can't call it ADD. It's called lack of maturation of the right frontal lobe. And so even for your spouse, lack of maturation of the right frontal lobe. After the age of 18, we no longer diagnose this as ADD. Okay? Now it's lack of maturation of the right frontal lobe. And that same type of exercising of create your day by every half hour. So at 8, 8.30, 9, 9.30, 10, 10.30 each of those and have him make that list at night, not literally written down. He has to mentally create that is actually an exercise. And it's as hard for him as lifting a 50 pound weight. Oh, I can do one or two, eight, eight thirty, nine. And be like, okay, my mind's already gone off here. Okay, who won that football game last night? Okay. He has to be able to create that list, and the more consistently he creates that list, the more developed that brain gets. So that's something that's very easy. In the child, maturing the frontal lobe is partially by activating the cerebellum and then feeding forward information to the frontal lobe. So in that child, what we'll do are very, very specific activities on their left side. So I'll mirror you. Of course, this is my right, but their left side doing figures of eight with the left side, okay? Doing little hand motions like this. Or taking a ball, where's our ball, Ashley? 